Well, my name is Dave Elsner. I'm with the Noah Coastal Services Center, and I'm here to talk to you about Open Inspect, which is a open source version of an existing tool that's been out um, for quite a while, actually. It was an Esri plugin. So, um, since I was a little kid, I have bugged the living daylights out of almost everyone, from my mother to now my wife, by asking questions. So I thought I'd frame this as a series of questions for to organize the talk. What is this? Thing. Why did we, the federal Congress government, decide to go to open source? Um, what does open, set, open Inspect actually do? What do you need to run it? What do you get out of it? Who else has kind of used it? Very briefly. And um, how can you get involved? Because we need you to be involved. <coughs> so, why this tool? Back in early 2000, actually, we um, we're working with some folks interested in corals, coral restoration and the impacts of land cover and changes on a terrestrial environment to coral reefs. And they wanted something that they could take to a community meeting that would run on a laptop environment and help the general public understand the impacts of land use change on stuff that would be entering the marine environment. All right. So, and this was out of the, uh, the dry side of two mountain ranges in Hawaii, which is a very interesting place. If you go there, it looks just like southern Idaho with palm trees. Okay, it is that dry. It's just bone dry at times. And so it presented some real interesting challenges for us that I'll talk about. But we developed this tool, first released it in 2004, and as, as many of you know, the way Esri goes, well, we had it. so we built it for eight then we had to revise it for 9, then revise it for 9, 1, 9, 2, 9, 3, 9, 4, slash 10. We said, you know what, um, I said, I'm, I'm pulling the plug on that. Um, so we've come up with open ends then. So why? Well, it, it wasn't just the constant revision. In <laughs> software, it always takes constant revision. Okay, now I'm going to need to start my timer. <coughs> All right, somebody stop me. Give me a wave. I can't read my time. Um, Esri, our Esri software requires the desktop environment and social analysts. Our primary audience is usually county governments, state and local managers, and their GIS shops. They don't have deep pockets. There have been a lot of them that said we can't, we can't afford that. Some of them have them. Some people, it's not a problem. Others say, you know, we can't do that, that's really cool. Why don't you build us like something we can use on the web that would be free? Well, if you can imagine doing doing the town dam is just where we start. That kind of stuff in a web environment for the world is what they really wanted. Um, we said, no, nah, let's not try that. What what other things can we have? Um, easy online and free. Back at Geo 2007, I think, which is a conference that I was at because the Coastal Services Center hosted it, but it's really used for geospatial tools. I invite you all to come to 2013, will be the next one. Um, Gary Watry made a presentation on this open source tool called Mac Windows that I was unaware of at the time. I said, you know what, that's an interesting idea. I mean, he's walked into this bastion of Esri add-ons, and is, is talking open source. Yeah, I should talk to, so we talk a lot. And I also learned that basins, which is one of the things that NSPEC kind of slots into a, into a gap in the basin suite of tools pretty nicely. The basins, of course, had been on a map window. So it seemed like it was a, um, a pretty nice fit. What happened is, or what we found is that the strengths of the open source is, you know, Mac window is fast. And I don't know how your Esri coding unit is, but we, we have a shop of like eight programmers and some of them coded up our tool. Um, it was a bit of a dog. You know, it was slow because of the way that raster calculations were done. Um, it's about ten times, runs ten times faster which works really nicely in Mac Windows. It is, you know, free. Not free, the, the software is free, nothing, you know, it's still not free. It takes money to support. And it has community support. Drawbacks, it is a different program. 
So 80 to 90 percent of the people we're usually trying to use reach as Noah. They know Esri. They hate paying for it, but it's it's easy for them to use. It's familiar. So that's a hurdle we're going to have to take into account as, as we push that window forward, overcome that. So learning curve. Um, some of the things are missing. They're still missing. I'm hoping to talk with folks here about how we can get some of the functionality in there that, that would make things easier. And, you know, community support. So it's a strength. It can be a weakness. Um, Esri, when things really went south, you know, we were paying them a couple of grand a year. We could call them up and talk to them, and, and they had somebody right there. So that's a little bit, it, it's a two-edged sword there. All right, <clears throat> enough of that. What does Open Inspect do? So Inspect, Open Inspect, it's a water quality screening tool. It is, you know, it was the non-point source pollution and erosion comparison tool. So every one of those words is, a, is an important one. It's going to look at non-point source pollution, going to make estimates of erosion, and it's best suited for comparing different use cases of those, uh, and in a screening kind of environment. Spatially distributed, it is raster based, and we, as I say, compare the different things, and it is in a user-friendly graphical environment here, in a GIS system. So the nice thing there is once you get the results of our analysis, you can carry them forward with further analyses. All right, what's in there? Well, probably like any other watershed model, we have water flows downhill, so you need your topo data set, which we need to have flow directions slope. Then soils and land cover, precipitation, those will determine how much water runs off. That runoff plus the land cover and these magic numbers I'll talk about, pollutant coefficients, are going to give you non point source pollutant load and runoff topo, soils, and the land cover will determine the amount of erosion that runs off. So that's a lot of stuff to put in this little model. Um, we didn't invent any of it. That was an important thing. It's not the Coastal Services Center's technique. An important criteria in here was what we were doing was enabling users to use fairly accepted techniques in what they were doing. So we have the Soil Conservation Services runoff model of your SES curve numbers. You're probably familiar with those. Um, Non-point source pollutants are using the event mean concentration concept, which I'll talk a little bit more about. And then for erosion, because we were in this really dry part of Hawaii, we wanted to do, um, you know, use a, a version of the universal soil loss equation. The, the universal soil loss equation. So, well, we'll use the Russell version, the revised universal soil loss equation. That is more appropriate for annual. And they said, well, that's good, but you know what? We're over here. We might only get seven rainfall events a year. That's their average number of raining days. Um, some of those, their, their average for the high mountains, actually, is almost 160 inches of rain out of those seven raining events. So they can get huge storms, not very many. So they said, we want to look at individual events as well. So we put two different runoff or erosion models in there. Muscle, which is the modified version, um, and that's more appropriate for events versus Russell. All right. Well, it's a model, right? The first thing you start doing when you, when you do a model is start throwing out bits of reality. Right? So what did we leave out? Um, there, there's no stormwater drainage per se in this. Stuff just it flows downhill. Okay. So if you've got diversions, um, anything like that, that flow is, you know, is not calculated captured correctly in here. Now, you, now, if you know your flow network, you can burn it in, um, because we do use a tab down, so, so you can simulate that. But we don't have that. We don't have anything like snow melt. And if you're interested in massive movements of land, you know, landslides and stuff, we don't capture that sediment kind of stuff. This is real erosion from, from fields and stuff. Um, as my background, I'm a phytoplankton and Oceanographer, phytoplankton, physical oceanography, right? I care about time. There's no time in this. A single, single biggest um, <laughs> assumption, I think, but it was really required. So it'll run on a little laptop, right? It doesn't take a, a Unix cluster and a herd of graduate students to make it work. 
What does no time element mean? It means once a, a bit of sediment or pollutant comes off of the grid cell of its origin and it starts moving downstream, it all, it's, it's a conservative tracer. Okay? Sediment isn't picked up in one cell and redeposited somewhere else. There's no nutrient dynamics, there's no uptake by plants. Okay? So the numbers that come out in spec are worst case scenario. So <coughs> it comes up and it, and it all it just accumulates. Okay? Worst case scenario. That's, in, that's important. It's also why I tell people, you know, I would be real hesitant to use that for like a TMDL if you don't check it because you're missing the number you're, we're going to predict is higher than what you would expect to see. Okay?